Well, hello, my paranormal peeps, and welcome back to another Deep Woods Paranormal Podcast. My name is Matt Harvey. I am the founder of the Deep Woods Paranormal po- Podcast. Uh, I am also uh, the founder of Deep Woods Paranormal. Um, so today on the show, we are going to answer a bunch of people's questions. Uh, we, from time to time, get questions, and essentially, I, I would imagine that if one person is asking it, multiple people have that same question. So. Thank you to everybody who has, uh, well, we've been getting qu- quite a few comments. Uh, we've also been getting quite a few uh, private messages with questions and requests to come out and check out people's locations. Uh, so thank you for that. Uh, we really appreciate the opportunity to come, number one, meet with you, but number two, get an opportunity to check out what you have going on um, at your properties or your businesses. So I just want to put that out there first. Um, so a lot of people keep asking me, you know, what's going on with the UFO case. Uh, after almost six weeks of investigating, Amanda and I have decided to, uh, kind of close the case at this point in time. There's just really no much, not no much else we can do. Uh, we've spent a lot of time every Friday and Saturday night, almost out at different locations, chasing, um, leads people have given us. Uh, we've also been, you know, chasing reports trying to go out and experience it for ourselves and again i am now in the process of putting that first show together uh it was very challenging and uh so um we're going to be still doing some more interviews with people and stuff like that uh, witnesses will not be interviewed uh we will just basically have them give a statement a written statement and then we will either read that to you on the show or we will essentially have it typed and maybe even read it to you there. So, yeah, I mean, very, very, very challenging, um, you know, to be, to have people be threatened and stuff like that and told to just be quiet. It's just, it just tells you how high up this, this possibly goes. Um, You know, the, I don't want to say corruption, but the cover up of what's really going on, you know, is it, is it actually aliens? Is it actually some species from another world that's coming in and and doing crazy um, operations and experiments on cows? You know, are they just trying to, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. I don't want to get into it too much because I don't want to get into the show too much. That'll all be on the show. We've, we've man and I've had multiple conversations about what's going on and what we think is actually happening you know is it uh anyways all right so we'll get into that when we get into the show uh that show should air hopefully in the next two to three weeks hopefully um we're working on a lot of cases we have a lot of irons with a fire um bear with me my voice is a little messed up right now <laughs> sorry about that all right so that basically is that ufo case in a nutshell um we're still taking reports we're still chasing leads. We're still um, working on that. We may do another show on it in a, at a later time, but I just can't um, put any more time and effort into this at this point um, because we're just getting so much information, and I appreciate it. Please, please, please continue to send your reports in. Uh, continue to let us know what you're experiencing or seeing or whatever. Um, if you've heard about something, you know, please keep sending all that to us uh, because we will use it possibly in, in a later show. I am trying to figure out how to get to the point where I can, you know, get a show put together, shoot in one weekend, get it put together the next week and get it out to you guys on YouTube and Rumble and maybe some other platforms in the future uh, within about a week's time. I'd like to have a show come out every every week for you guys. So you can see our investigations. You can see we're not just podcasters um, because we've been investigating the paranormal for 30 years. We started podcasting a couple of years ago. And um, so, yeah, I mean, that's what's going on with that. In fact, Amanda and I were doing our 150th podcast uh, the other day. We were working on it. So this is actually podcast 151. It doesn't really count towards 150, even though it's coming out at a... uh, different time so podcast 150 will be a very special podcast for us Uh, we're going to go down memory memory lane and talk about some of our favorite cases and and stuff like that so 
<clears throat> I want to get on to your guys' questions and uh, go from there. Uh, the first question, why do ghosts attack feet in the middle of the night while people are sleeping? Well, it's feet, hands, they pull sheets off sometimes. I mean, we've all seen that movie, that horror movie where somebody's sleeping in bed and they, you know, their feet are hanging out and you're like, oh. No, you know, you know, something's going to happen. They're going to get pulled out of bed or something's going to touch their foot or ugh, just, yeah, that, that to me is, is pretty personal. Never had my foot touched, but I've had my hands touched before. And so I always wrap my, you know, I keep my feet under the covers, but I always keep my hands also wrapped when I sleep most of the time, even if it's hot, I'll find something to put over my hands so they don't touch me. And, uh, you know, cause I get, I get visitors in the middle of the night, um, mainly and i'll talk about that in just a second mainly little kids gee i wonder where they came from uh but anyways you know they're not male um they're not malevolent they're not trying to hurt me they're just they're curious they're coming in to see what's going on uh especially when i start talking in the middle of the night to a client about uh ghosts and bigfoots and stuff like that so anyways um why do ghosts attack people in the middle of the night I don't really think it's necessarily normally attacks, you know, the, the, the videos you see where people are being pulled out of bed or, you know, having their hands or their feet or other portions of their body, body, um, touched, I would imagine is, is, you know, real, those are like isolated cases. Let's put it that way. Um, that might be more on the negative or demonic side of things, maybe poltergeist activity. Um, and that's something attempting to keep people awake, um, to keep them scared at night. Um, demonic activity will focus in on like one person. Usually it picks one person and then starts to try and sleep deprive them. And I know because I've went through it, um, we'll try and mess with their sleep. In fact, I get my sleep with mess with all the time. You know, I'm constantly fighting these things. Um, way different situation for me now because I know what's going on. I know how to deal with it, but you know, they, they're not, they know they're not allowed to mess with me, but they still try. Um, so in the middle of the night, you know, that's when we're at our, our most vulnerable, essentially, you know, you go to sleep, your eyes are closed. Your, your hearing is kind of, you know, mumbled your, your body's kind of sh mainly shut down. It's about 95% shut down. You know, you're like if you turn a computer on to sleep mode and uh, you try to type in keys or whatever, it won't do anything because it's on sleep mode, you know. And then if you finally hit the enter button or whatever it is enough times, it'll go, oh, OK, I'm sorry, what? <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, that's how we are. You know, when we go to sleep, our subconscious is the only thing pretty much running in our bodies, um yeah we move here and there just to make sure that we're still alive and stuff like that our body wants to make sure we're still alive and it controls our breathing and all that stuff um but spirits do visit us in the middle of the night to basically communicate with us i think um you know i've talked about amanda having conversations with somebody in the middle of the night and rolling over and seeing like a spirit standing there and it's like oh no here we go and as soon as they see me, see them, it's like, oh, he's awake. <laughs> and then that can of worms gets opened up and it's like, oh, crap. And then they come over and they try and communicate with me. It's like, no, 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 no. I am going back to sleep. I will communicate with you at another time. You know, I don't care if you hang out or whatever, as long as you're not hurting anything. Uh, I have specific rules. You can't hurt anything. You can't scare anybody. You, you know, you can't do anything malevolent. If you're going to be here, you either need to be quiet or if you want to communicate and have fun, that's great. You know, like I tell the spirits, behind, or the kids behind me, but whoever's attached to the dolls or anything else in this room, you're welcome to be here. You're welcome to cruise around and, and enjoy things. You can't hurt anybody. You can't, you know, basically scare anybody. Uh, I don't want you messing with my dogs or my animals. And uh, as you can see, Chance is very comfortably sleeping on the couch over there, <laughs> the big white dog. Um, but basically, you know, nothing really happens here. I mean, we I see things from time to time. Uh, when I start doing this podcast, as you can see in the door, it's the daytime. Um, sometimes you'll see a shadow peer around the corner, you know, and I just contribute that to be a little kid, you know, showing himself. 
um, last night. I was again, I was having a conversation at 2 30 in the morning and sitting on the bed looking into the bathroom, and a shadow head pops around the corner, looks at me, realizes I saw it, and ducks back. And it's like, oh, okay. You know, and that the activity picks up here whenever we're going to get a case. When I start seeing activity going on in the house, um, things start to move on their own or things, you know, I start seeing shadow people or I see apparitions or whatever. I go, okay, you know, when's the next case coming in and what's it going to be? Um, and that sometimes it's Bigfoot too. Sometimes it's Bigfoot or UFO cases or whatever. Um, you know, our house is pretty, pretty mellow. There isn't a lot of activity happening here. Most times it's, it's dormant. Um, I do have a camera just above me uh, facing down, covering this whole room and into the hallway and uh it's it's motion activated so it knows i'm here right now it's already sent me a couple alerts but if i were to stand up and walk out of the office it would have trigger and it triggers for animals it triggers for people and triggers for other things it also picks up uh excuse me it picks up noises so essentially you know this room is, is covered for uh paranormal activity um one of these days, I might try and live stream that and let people watch. I got to get these, these, these dolls. Oops, keep going the wrong way. These dolls here put somewhere. I have to put them in a, um, in a place where they're going to be comfortable. Uh, there's just too much crap back on that table. What you can't see is down below me or behind me is there's a stack of gear, uh, cameras and ghost hunting gear, Bigfoot hunting gear, and all that stuff stacked up behind me. Anyways, so, um, you know, I think they just, I think ghosts, if they do come and touch your foot or touch your hand or talk, try and talk to you, they're just trying to communicate with you. Uh, I, you know, I know it's scary as hell to wake up and there's somebody standing there and then all of a sudden you, you finally wake your kind of self up and, you know, a second later and you're like, oh crap, what the heck? Uh, and then they're gone or, you know, something yanks on your foot in the middle of the night or pulls the sheets off of you or comes and tries to pull you, you know, pull your hand and pull you up out of bed, you know, um, which has happened to me several times. As a kid, I used to have my pillow pulled out from under my head while I was sleeping um, and wake up with my pillow down, you know, on the ground. I had a bunk bed and then it always would, you know, I'd look, I'd look down, it would be there, then I'd look back down and it wouldn't be there. It'd be, you know, then I'd turn around and look down at the bottom of the uh, ladder and that's where it would be. It had moved. Uh, and then, you know, that creepy little girl's laugh. <laughs> that's not even close to what it sounded like. But, uh, you know, but I don't think they're really necessarily trying to attack. I think they're more or less trying to get your attention. Maybe they're trying to get you to get up because there's something you need to see. Maybe they need help. Um, maybe they're trying to get you to go in a different direction so that you're not uh, because something's going to happen. You know, sometimes spirits will direct you in a different direction. Sometimes, you know, you just end up somewhere. You're like, where, why am I here? How did I get here? You know, you know your subconscious all of a sudden takes over and you kind of drift into a driving sleep or a walking sleep. And you're maybe you're coming down the hall to go to the bathroom and you end up in the kitchen. <laughs> you know what I mean? And you're like, wait a minute. I was going to the bathroom. Why am I in the kitchen? And you look around, you're like, okay, what's going on here? You know, and then something happens. You're like, oh, okay, that's why I was supposed to be here. But yeah, I mean, I think they, they manipulate us. Um, and I've talked about this before. I think they manipulate our brain waves uh, to be able to see them, hear them, feel them. Um, you know, they, they pull energy out of the air, which leaves that cold spot that you feel um, and stuff like that. And I think that's just them trying to manifest in some way and if you don't want to understand what a manifest means it just means to show themselves um, or you know move something um, leave a voice on an audio recorder um, maybe you actually hear it which is called a disembodied voice or maybe you get a, a video of something moving um, or you just see something moving that's just all manifestation um, okay so why do ghosts attach themselves to items and uh, she put doll question mark um and she's talking about i can't even point to them uh these guys back here and other items on that table uh i think that spirits sometimes 
you know, I mean, let's let's talk about humans for a second. Humans are very attached to different things. Uh, you know, you might it might be your car, like I had a little red for a long time. Um, it was just a little Jeep. I forget what it was, but it was a smaller Jeep. Uh, beautiful little car, but I mean, voices would come, I would have the radio off and a voice would come through the radio and say something and I could never understand what it said. Uh, that's why I called her a little red, but I think the lady that owned her previously uh, possibly died and she got turned into the dealership, probably sold to the dealership because uh, whoever, you know, whatever family members, if she had any, didn't need, need a vehicle. And so essentially she um, attached herself to the car because she really liked that car, you know, and it had like 15,000 miles in it. And it was a 2012 or something like that. And it was like a 10 year old car with 15,000 miles or 20,000 miles, whatever it had on it. I think it might have 18,000. I think I put another 20,000 on it or something like that when I turned it in for the truck here. But um, yeah, it lo- strange things would happen. Doors would open and close in the car. Um, you know, things would move in the car. Uh, she would talk through the radio and I could just feel her presence every time I drove her. And, uh, so yeah, I mean, she was just attached to that car. She must've just loved it or maybe something, you know, there was no, that car had never been an accident or anything. Maybe she passed away in the car. I don't know, but, um, like the dolls behind me here, um, it could be that whoever owned these dolls, there's a lot of people that collect dolls and they just love them. They're like their kids. And so, you know, they spend their whole life collecting these prized dolls. And when they pass away, part of their energy stays attached to it, you know, because we, we're just energy. If you think about it, um, like I said, our brain's like a computer and the rest of our body is just like, uh, runs on electrical currents. Um, you know, we eat food to basically be able to create energy for ourselves and, um, you know, and basically water and other things are like the fluids of our body, like an engine would have. Um, but basically we're just, we're just energy. Everything's just energy. So, um, if I go, let's say, let's do it this way. I, I, I witnessed Chris Fleming do this on the Queen, Queen Mary. If you know Chris, Chris Fleming, he's a very well-known uh, psychic medium. And uh, he was on there. And I, this is when I met Jay and Grant and all this other stuff of, of ghost owners or taps. Um, you've seen the TV shows. Anyways, he was on there and he was trying to prove a point. And he went over to a spot and he just yelled and screamed and blah, blah, blah at this one spot. Then he got up and walked away and went back to the podium. And he said, okay, is there anybody sensitive here? And a couple of people raised their hand. He said, okay, walk over to that. What do you feel? And they felt anger. They felt his frustration. And that just that energy got left on that location. Um, you know, the Queen Mary is uh, very, very haunted, supposedly. Uh, I've witnessed many things on that ship. I've investigated that ship, I don't know how many times, 100 times maybe. Uh, I've been all over that ship, up and down through the, you know, exterior and uh, the the, the uh, lower parts of the ship and stuff like that. And we've had a lot of the cool experiences on that ship. So, you know, I think that over time, um, like I, we had a client where she called me and, and she didn't really have a case, but she was just really concerned because she had just walked down the hallway and I guess she was doing laundry or whatever she was doing. She came down and sat down in a chair and she looked back up and she saw herself walk down the hallway. And she's like, I'm alive. I know I'm alive. My husband's sitting right here. He can tell you I'm alive. And, but I just saw myself walk down the hallway. And I told her, don't worry about it. It's just residual. It's just an implant of energy on that location. You know, she's lived in the house for 30 some odd years and she goes up and down the hallway all the time. It's just, it's just an imprint on, on uh, history. It's just a rerun like on TV. And that's sometimes what you get with these things too. Um, Some of these spirits or or just energies implanted on objects, uh, be it a house, be it an item, be it a car, be it a whatever land. Uh, A lot of spirits, you know, if they're buried on a property, 
they will stay with that property if they're intelligent and they they just have an attachment to that land. Um, maybe something traumatic happened to them. They will stay there um, until you basically go and, and tell them it's okay to leave, you know, or help them with whatever issue they're having. And sometimes that takes a lot of work. You have to go in there and you have to do EVP sessions or and or spirit box sessions. Any way you can communicate with them, use K2s, whatever device you're using to try and figure out what's going on and how you can help them. And then they can be at peace and then they can move on. So, I mean, that's why sometimes things attach themselves to things as well. They, they know they're going to a certain location. They know there's a certain person that probably is a little more, I don't I hate the word sensitive or psychic, but a little bit more open to the possibility of them being there. And sometimes they'll establish a communication with that person in some way, shape or form. Um, and then that person will, whoever it is, whether it's me or somebody else, um, We'll start to try and communicate with them, hopefully, and try and get to the bottom of why things are happening. And, uh, you know, that's what we do. Uh, and then hopefully come to a resolution where that spirit can can move on or be at rest. Or, or if they're going to stay, they can be at peace and they can just enjoy being there. So, you know, anyways, um, I think that's part of why, I mean, that's, you could, we could deep dive into why spirits attach themselves to things forever. Um, I could be here talking for days, probably weighing me, we can go through so many different examples, but, um, anyways, so somebody asked, what is a shadow person? Um, that's pretty complicated as well. I mean, none of these answers are real. I can't just answer these right off the bat. I mean, they're just... There's a lot of theory. You got to remember, this is all theory. Yeah, I'll have to take this with a grain of salt. Um, spirits are theory at this point. You know, even though I mean, a majority of us know that they're real. Um, we've experienced something that we can say that could be anything else but a ghost. Um, you know, basically, I, I just think that a, uh, a shadow person, in theory, could be a lot of things. It could be a ghost that can't seem to manifest itself completely show itself like a normal to look like us. Maybe they don't have enough energy. Maybe they don't know how to do it. Um, I've always been told by other mediums and other stuff that spirits have to learn once they, you know, once you've left this realm and you've gone to whatever's next, um, if you decide to come back or you decide to stay, you have to learn how to do things again. It's like becoming a baby and having to learn. And as, as you get, as you get older, uh, the older the spirit is, the more intelligent they seem to get. Um, the more aware of the situations they seem to get and the more they can communicate with you. Um, so the older spirits seem to be more able to communicate with us, if you will. Um, I think they're able to manifest themselves better. Now, that's not to say that a, a brand new spirit that just passed away um, isn't able to do all that stuff. But I think that the older spirits are more able to do it um, maybe on a longer uh, period of time. For a longer period of time, they're able to do more things like move things, um, maybe create a disembodied voice. Um, also, maybe they're able to uh, figure out how to use the, you know, the audio recorder to create an EVP or the video recorder to show themselves or to talk onto the device or manipulate the device. I'm sorry, uh, how to manipulate a spirit box to create a voice uh, and stuff like that. Cause these, these spirits, they don't have a physical body anymore. They don't have a physical spirit. I mean, a physical voice anymore. Um, so for them to create that, they have to figure out how to manipulate the sounds in the air, if you will, the sounds the devices are making, which isn't very much. Digital audio recorders don't make a lot of noise. You know, a lot of people say that the old tape recorders were the best way to record EVPs because they could use that clinking and clanking you hear from the um, from the tapes going around and the the, the little mechanisms inside of the uh, recorder to manipulate that audio and create a voice. Um, I don't know if that's true or not, but it, it kind of does make sense. 
Um, this day and age, I mean, these digital voice recorders don't make very much noise at all. Uh, either do the video cameras are much quieter. They're also much smaller. And uh, so it's it's probably a little bit more difficult for them to figure out how to manipulate these things. Um, now, I could be wrong about that, but I'm just saying. Anyways, a shadow person, there's a lot of theories. Um, could they be an interdimensional being? Could they be a time traveler? Um, could they be crossing across from another dimension? You know, um, so, I mean, this is all going down a huge rabbit hole, but, you know, is it a ghost? You know, like I said, is it just a spirit not able to manifest themselves to look like you and me? Maybe they just, they only have enough energy to show themselves as a silhouette, a black silhouette. Um, you know, and there's a lot of other theories of what they are. Um, are they demons? Are they this is? Are they that? Are they aliens? Are they whatever? Um, are they just some interstellar, interstellar excuse me, um, being that basically is, is monitoring things? Are they angelic? You know, who knows? 100%. Me, I think that most of them are, uh, is a, I think it's mainly a manifestation of a human being trying to maybe cross across from, let's, let's just put it this way. If I take a piece of like a book and, you know, there's layers, there's different pages, which creates layers, right? And I want to go from one page to the next. I have to turn that page, but imagine I don't know how, you know, exactly how dimensions work, but I'd imagine they're like stacked next to each other. There might be one dimension here, one dimension here, one dimension here. And to get through that, you have to go through each page. And so to push your way through into that next dimension must, I don't know what it would take to do that, but must be oh, really hard to do. Um, or it could be really easy for them. I have no idea. For us, it'd probably be really hard. Um, who knows what science has accomplished at this point? The, if, if they do, if they are able to go through different dimensions, they're not saying anything yet. But um, anyways, yeah, so I think that's possibly what a shadow person could be. I, my, my personal opinion is that they're just they're just spirits uh, that are just basically uh, maybe they're not necessarily here um, as the person that passed away, but maybe they're watching. Um, you know, somebody told me, oh yeah, they're future ghost hunters. <laughs> I went, oh, okay. And that kind of goes into time travel and stuff like that. But, um, they're mainly just observing usually. Um, but shadow people, you know, there's different types of shadow people. Um, there's shadow people that attack people. Um, and I think that's more on the demonic side. I think uh, demonic entities sometimes will show themselves as a shadow or whatever or a silhouette until they get closer because they want to scare people. That's what their whole theory, that's what their whole thing is. They want to scare you into submission. They want you to do their bidding. And so um, if you're afraid of the shadows or you're afraid of whatever, that's how they're going to manifest. If you're afraid of clowns, they might manifest as a clown. You know, you've, saw, you've seen the horror movies. But um, anyways, so there's, like I said, there's a lot of different theories on shadow people. Uh, again, I could go into this for hours and hours and hours, but um, I have a few more questions I need to get to, and then I'll show you guys some cool stuff in just a second here. Okay. Um, have you had any activity with the haunted dolls? Yes, we have had activity. Um, when Kaylee was here, my niece, she's 13, I think, maybe 14. Um, she was coming out of the bathroom, walking into the hallway, and I think this some of the spirits attached to these dolls um, behind me are, I think they they are her age, um, and so essentially they may have, uh, you know, it's, it's, something said something to her, and she turned and looked in the office, <laughs> and she quickly came out and sat down on the couch, and you could tell she was afraid. Um, and everybody's like, well, what was that? I'm like, um, okay. <laughs> you know, and that's not the first time Kaylee's had, um, stuff trying to communicate with her. You know, if you've seen our cemetery video where she went with us, um, she did have some, she did experience the kids, the kids were there and, uh, they seemed to come, come forward because she was there. 
So, um, in the future, she may come with us. Uh, we want to be very careful with her. She's just a young, impressionable young lady. And, uh, you know, we don't want to, um, number one, scare her away from doing this. Uh, we don't want her to have an experience where she's like, I'm never going to do this again. And she turns herself off. I think she's a little bit sensitive, if you will. Uh, she seems to see and th- she seems to be intuitive and picking up on things. My wife's side of the family is like that. Um, they're very um, intuitive and very sensitive um, to spirits. Uh, they don't necessarily see them or, or talk to them, but they definitely um, can can feel them. Like Amanda can walk into a room and feel if there's something there. Anyways, so yeah, I've had that. Um, like I said last night, the shadow in the bathroom, uh, which, which was a very tall. Again, if you're looking into the doorway, if you're watching the video, uh, the video podcast, if you're looking at the doorway um, right across from the TV, you can see the light switch. Um, it's a little easier to see during the day. And that, that basically the, t- the bottom of the light switch or the bottom square part of that um, light switch is, uh, that's about as tall as I've seen the shadow that hangs out in the uh, hallway. Now, I have gotten a male voice from in there as well. I mean, when I was doing, an EV, when I was doing the uh, podcast, I was listening back, and there's a male voice that says something about the hallway. I can't remember. I have it recorded. One of these days, we'll sit down, and uh, I'll, I'll continue to go through these um audio pocket audio podcast and pull out evps and we'll take a listen to some of the stuff that's come through some of it's pretty clear so yeah so that happened this this has happened the shadows happened in the hallway uh on the last pot video podcast i think one of the dolls moved and then um i saw the shadow in the other room i've had a little girl come into our bedroom or a couple little kids come into our room at night um, I feel that they feel like they're more comfortable probably in a room with us. And, um, you know, I, I tell them they need to stay in the office. This is where they need to stay. Uh, I don't want them in the rest of the house, but I don't mind if they venture out every once in a while and explore the house. As long as I said they follow the rules and they don't hurt anything or damage anything or try to scare anybody or scare the animals, uh, we're good. So. Um, I've also had an EVP come through of the, um, you know, with the spectacles of a woman and then a man had a dream about a woman in a theater. So those are, uh, theater spectacles. Uh, they're like binoculars. They would use those to basically zoom in so they could see the play a little bit better, especially if they're up high or, or whatever. But uh, I don't know if she's still attached to that or if she just basically that was her goodbye or whatever. But uh, anyways, there's a a lot of things attached to these dolls and other things back here like this um, dragon on my on my right here. Um, Basically, we got that from a state sale. Uh, A gentleman had passed away and we think that maybe he's attached to that. So. Um, we haven't had any activity from him, but I do think that he's, uh, you know, there's some energy. Let's just put it that way. There's some energy attached to that. This Raggedy Ann doll, um, if you're looking at it, we were in a house where we were in the pile house, um, OP pile house. And we went up to the room where the kids had had, uh, died of disease and they were between four and eight or something like that, or four and 10. I could be wrong. Um, feel free to comment down below if you know, uh, but anyways, um, she, uh, may have picked up on an entity. Some energy may have been transferred to her, uh, and stuff like that. So the Elmo doll and the other little doll there, I don't think those are haunted. Those are more props at this point. Um, if you push on their stomachs, um, they will talk. And the whole theory behind them is if we go into a location where there are kids, of the age that would be in, you know interested in toys, uh, we could take those and ask them to push on the stomach or make the them talk, and so that might document um, some activity. But like I said, a lot of these dolls here seem to have some kind of energy to, to them. I've picked them up from all different places. Um, I've picked up I think eight of them now, 
uh, at some point in time, as long as I'm, I'm sure that they're okay and they won't hurt anybody or do anything, they may find other homes. But uh, until then, uh, basically, they're going to stay here and we're going to continue to monitor them. Uh, what I want to do one of these days, once I get this table cleaned off behind me and find new homes for a lot of stuff, what happened was we got a, a new printer. It's very, you know, one of those bigger printers that does everything, copy, scan, fax, um, all that stuff for Amanda's business. Um, she does uh, Poshmark. She's selling clothes uh, because she's losing weight so fast. She's just, you know, she has a lot of clothes that are pretty much brand new. She's just selling that stuff on Poshmark. And she's got a lot of really nice shoes and other things that she's selling at a pretty good discount. So if you're interested in that, you know, feel free to contact me and I'll send you over her information. Um, so yeah, the dolls seem to be active. I've had numerous occasions where I've had contact with little kids in the house. Uh, which is cool. You know, the little kids seem to be fine. They're not projecting themselves or anything else. Uh, they seem to be well-behaved. They're just kind of curious. And uh, when they figure out I can see them, they usually like, oh, uh -oh. <laughs> and sometimes, you know, I've had a conversation. I've asked them, you know, can I help you? You know, do you need anything? And then they just kind of turn and walk away. So um, anyways, uh, what are we currently working on? Uh, we have two big foot cases, actually three. We have Joe's that has always has been going on for like three years. We're, we got to get back up there, but unfortunately it's just like 110 degrees uh, up there. And it's just, it's just because of the humidity. It's 102 or three degrees on his property right now. And the humidity is at like a hundred percent. So it's like 110, 100 plus degrees, even at night, it's in the high nineties and then it feels like it's a hundred and something. So, um, you know, I don't mind going out there and sweating my butt off, um, but there's not a lot of activity usually during the day or in the night at, in the summer out there. Um, we get some sparse tree knocks, um, but they don't really act, you know, they're not really active at this point. Uh, they'll be more active probably August, September-ish um, when they come into what I believe is our mating season. Um, if you have Bigfoots on your property or you go to places where there's activity and you are, you're actively investigating Bigfoots, um, August through November seems to be the breeding time. That's when you get the screams, you get the tree knocks, you get the, um, more aggressive behaviors by Bigfoots, um, uh, rocks being thrown at you or thrown at homes or, you know, whatever. Uh, trailers getting rocked, all kinds of stuff like that. We seem to it seems to happen between August and November, and then from November end of November through um, February and March, it kind of dies down, and then March through about this time, it gets active again, and then during the summer, um, it seems to be really late in the night when they come out. Uh, three, four o'clock in the morning, and they're usually on active for four or five hours. Uh, usually by seven, eight, nine, nine, three or four hours, a couple hours. Usually by seven, eight, nine o'clock in the morning, you know, you, you don't hear from them again. You don't hear anything. Not to say they aren't out, they could still be out, but they're, they're extremely quiet and uh, they don't want to be known. They're just doing their thing and it's really hard to communicate with them. So, we're working, we're still working in the Sam Houston National Forest with David. Um, trying to wrap up that show as well. That'll be show number two. And then we're working on a third show with a client that has Bigfoots on his property. He has possible UFO activity and then he has ghosts. And we're, we're going real slow on this case. Um, we will be documenting it more as we go. Um, he wants to, once the show, that show comes out, we'll probably start uh, putting out more content um, from his property uh, as we go. It's he, His property reminds me a lot of Joe's because Joe's property has his family members that haunt the property. And that's all well and great. But when you're trying to video, or, you know, you're trying to record on video a Bigfoot and they're messing with your video camera, turning your camera off, turning it on because they want attention. Um, it makes it a little difficult. 
they're lighting up the K2. We have to bring K2s to Joe's at all times because uh, well, I forget his name. His, his uncle is very active and really likes it when we're up there. And he's very friendly, but he he communicates with us. He likes to manipulate our gear. He drains our batteries. It's like, no, 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 no. We're trying to do Bigfoot research, but he wants attention. And it's, it's like, he's, you know, he's not, he's not, doesn't hurt anything. He just likes to manipulate gear and stuff. And so, you know, anyways. Um, so those three cases, we're working on Joe's still. Uh, we're still working on with David in the Sam Houston National Forest. Uh, we're trying to go into places where people don't normally go. We're trying to get a little more isolated. But again, it is so hot out right now. It's extremely hard to, you know, be out there for more than a couple hours at a time because uh, you're just you're getting dehydrated and all this other stuff's going on. And it's just so hot uh, and it just makes you not want to do anything. Uh, also, the camera gear can't handle 110 degree heat. It overheats. The batteries, you know, that messes with the electronics inside the devices, um, the video cameras and stuff like that. So um, I have not figured out how to keep the cameras a little cooler at this point. Um, so we have to kind of do late later hours where we're out recording. So um, normally during the summer, we do more investigations into ghosts and stuff like that. Um, more we're inside and it's cooler. So that's kind of what we're doing. Uh, we will kind of do maybe a show on the dolls themselves here. And once I get, like I said, once I get this organized, uh, I got to go through the claws of the doom back there. Uh, I've got 30 years worth of gear just sitting in there. Uh, a lot of it I haven't seen in years, but it's just in totes and just sitting in there and taking up space. And I got to go through and purge. So that'll be fun. And then once I do that, I can kind of move some of this other stuff. Oops. This other stuff off this table. And I can set up. I need that for charging gear and stuff. That was the whole premises of getting it and having meetings at that table with Amanda and other people. But uh yeah, I've gotta gotta get that out of there and get this area cleaned up behind me. Okay. So um that's what we're currently working on. Um, have you ever seen a Bigfoot? Yes, I've seen multiple Bigfoots. Um, different locations, different states, different times of the day, different colors, um, different sizes and shapes. Like I've, I've talked about that multiple times. I think they're they're like humans. Even though one may be, you know, several of them might be brown, they're all different stripes. Yeah, all different shapes and sizes. Excuse me. And so... The more I've done the research, the more sightings I've had, uh, I've been actually pretty pretty lucky. Uh, I've walked into places where they're actively um, doing their thing. And so I've been lucky enough to experience a lot of that. Um, you know, I've had Joe's Camp. I've had Black Star Canyon, um, where I kind of screwed that up at the end. But uh, they were still, you know, showing themselves. In a more in a threatening way as I had, uh, you know, done something I shouldn't have, but, um, I kind of crossed the line with them. And then, uh, you know, just other locations. I've had, had several encounters at several other locations too. Um, but, uh, like I said, I've been lucky enough to be at the right place at the right time. Uh, so let's see, have you analyzed the hair samples from the possible Bigfoot hairs? Uh, we are working on that. I kind of showed you guys this last time on um, this digital microscope we just got. Um, I am in the process of charging it up. So you can see um, you put the hairs under here and then essentially this microphone, this microscope will, you know, you can change the um, angle of it. It can plug into the computer. So I can actually visually see what I'm looking at. Uh, and it does have a plug-in here and then I'll, an adapter that goes into the computer. So I can take this, whether I'm you know in the field, out in the forest, or whether I'm here at the house, I can plug it in and look. Uh, it does come off. So I can sit here and, and take, you know, move it around at different angles that this won't allow me to do and uh, get different... Uh, viewpoints at the at the hair samples or whatever i'm looking at you know who knows what all um 
we're going to find out there. We have that tooth that I'm very interested in taking a better look at as well. And uh, we can record that so we can document it. And then if we do find hair samples that we think could be Bigfoot and we, we are a little bit more clear, you know, it's not just like, oh, I think this is a hair sample. We found this hair sample out there. We need to make sure, I was just reading an article earlier, that it has uh, the characteristics of being Bigfoot um, hairs. So, anyways, that's what's going on. That's what we're doing. Uh, thank you all for your questions. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. Or, you know, my, all my information is, all of our information is basically in the call, in the uh, description. My email my cell phone, you can call or text me, which a lot of people are doing now, which is awesome. I enjoy talking to people. You can go on our Facebook. You can message us through Facebook. Um, you can go on our website. You can um, basically um, go on there and type a message in and, and they'll send us a, a message. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we're, we're very accessible to you guys. Uh, I know a lot of people are afraid of ridicule. Please don't be afraid of ridicule. I mean, if you guys tell us, you know, you want to keep your us to keep your information private, we will. Um, most of these questions came from people that didn't want to be known. Uh, that's why I'm not saying it's from X, Y, or Z. Uh, I'm just basically reading the questions because people don't really want, uh, you know, people to know that they're curious about this stuff, which is kind of sad. Um, especially out here, if you say the word Bigfoot, you either get people that their ears you know, perk up and they go, oh, I've seen one and blah, blah, blah. And then you get the other half of the people that are like, oh, dude, you're nuts. They're not, there's no Bigfoots out here. Bigfoots aren't real. You know, I'm a hunter. I've been hunting for 40 years out here. I've never seen one, you know, and then and I respect both sides of that. You know, like I always say, you have to have an encounter and, and this could be for anything. It could be ghosts, UFOs, um, aliens, um, whatever demons angels whatever you have to have your own experience where you can say it can't be anything else but and uh so yeah um but yeah i just wanted to uh answer this question for you guys if you have questions feel full please feel free to contact us uh if you've seen something heard something experienced something and you want to share it with us again there is no um judgment uh, if you'd like to be on the podcast, again, we, you know, this is like a non-judgmental channel. Um, we are more of a scientific team. I try and keep it scientific, but, you know, being sensitive myself or open or whatever you want to call it, psychic, medium, whatever. Uh, you know, I, I, I've seen both sides of it. And uh, so, you know, like I said, we're not judgmental. We're not going to judge you. Uh, we're not going to tell you you're wrong or whatever. Uh, everybody has a theory about things, and at this point, whether you're a believer or non-believer, nobody's either proved or disproved anything 100%. So until somebody can 100% prove that ghosts are real or Bigfoots are real or UFOs are real or they aren't, um, you know, it's just going to be an open topic. So, all right, guys. Well, we thank, thank you guys for listening, and uh, thank you for watching. Um, Thank you for continuing to support our channel. Thank you to all the people over on Rumble. We are kicking butt and taking names over there. Um, thank you for all the new subscriptions, all the new comments. Uh, thank you to our YouTube people who are subscribing as well. We're almost at uh, 1,300 on YouTube, and we're almost at 600 on Rumble. And we're just gaining new followers like crazy. Uh, I cannot wait to get these shows out. I just want to make sure we have like four or five. We need to wrap up the current cases we're working on. And then once we get this stuff wrapped up, we will start to release these. I'm sorry that it's taking so long to get them out. Um, I know we haven't posted a lot of investigations or short videos or anything recently. Um, I need to start shooting some shorts at these locations. So you guys can see what we're doing and get a little, you know, just a little taste of what's to come. But uh, yeah, so we're we're just actively investigating. We have, like, like I said, a lot of irons in the fire. We have uh, probably about seven or eight people that want us to work with them on different 
types of cases from ghosts to UFOs to Bigfoots to other things. Um, I am working on putting that, uh, uh, well, I don't know what I want to call it, a, a forum or something where sensitive people can come on and communicate with each other and uh, stuff like that. I'm just not exactly sure how I'm going to do that. Uh, my normal day job, which I transport uh, railroad crew around, uh, that's changing too. So I don't know what's going to happen with that in the next couple of weeks. Uh, whoa. What was that? I don't know. Something just walked across the, the doorway there towards the bathroom. And it was white. It wasn't black. That was weird. Okay, so watch back for that. Um, anyways, I'm just telling myself to watch back for that. Maybe I can see it. All right, guys. Well, you guys have a good one. I appreciate you. And we will catch you on the next one. Uh...